All right, guys, here we go. It's Jalan from the Paradox Gaming Network. And today we're talking about all of the 4.5 skill changes. This is actually part two of a four-part series. Today I'm going to talk about the four main trees, and that is archery, battle rage, sorcery, and vitalism. As always, here's all the different ways to get in touch with me. I do this live on Fridays at these times. Still doing that five Apex giveaway, but this video has no hidden clues. So, like I said, we're going to talk about the four main trees and all their different skill changes. But before we do that, this is how I feel that the 4.5 meeting went along. You've got the teams that are responsible for the four main trees. And, you know, Archery's been just waiting. They're like, man, we have gotten nothing but nerfed all the way since the game launched. So when it came time to do skill changes, they brought the A-team, man. Because when you see the changes in Archery, you're going to be like, damn, Archery got buffed. And that they did. Battle Rage? Battle Rage has been like, oh man, we've been like the kings of the world. So, Battle Rage was just asleep in the meeting, and so a lot of changes went through, and Battle Rage didn't even see him coming. Now, Sorcery, there were a lot of nerfs to cast time, and casting, and all these things, and changes with skills and shuffling around. And I swear to God, Archer or Sorcery was the most diabolical, sneaky little bastards, because... They actually came out really good with all the changes. And Vitalism, man, this is what happened during the meeting. There was no Vitalism, people, because Vitalism got boned. We'll get to that. So let's talk about Archery. First and foremost, there's no more plus five meter passive. So what they do, oh, we're just going to increase all the ranges on all the Archery skills by five meters for free. Because that makes sense. Um, synergy with Stalker's Mark. As you're going to see, Stalker's Mark has changed when we get to Shadowplay. It's back to its roots and it applies a ranged damage increase. And Mana Force now combos with Stalker's Mark. It creates a huge amount of space between you and your target. So... You don't need a low lot of mobility if you can shove somebody away from you by 30 meters. Ridiculous. Endless Arrows gets a increase in damage. I <laughs> Makes no damn sense. Deadeye. Deadeye increases crit hit rate by 19%. Like, my god, man. A, almost 20% crit hit rate. Uh, at at ex exchange of losing 80 attack. Uh, they're really going to lose nothing because you're going to see they're going to pick up attack. Charge Bolt. Uh, Charge Bolt takes a large hit on the base number uh, by about half. But it gets 100% more damage from its range. So all you archers out there, you can do your own math. Uh, concussive Arrow. Silences, Bleeds. Uh, it took a bit of a hit on the damage coefficient. It goes from 450 to 375, but it damn near doubled its base damage. So, again, you're going to have to do your own numbers to see how much damage you lost. Uh, intensity? Intensity no longer gives an immunity to fear. So that is a big change, but intensity removes the mana force cooldown. So you're going to be able to just keep shoving people 20 meters away from you. I imagine this is going to be funny. It's going to be tab mana force, tab mana force, tab mana force. Uh, intensity also no longer gives the ranged crit rate increase over time. So that's a bit of a change. Double recurve. Hey, if we're giving archers every other fucking thing, let's just go ahead and give them 30% range damage instead of 17. Uh, arrow of light. Uh, let's go ahead and give them a new skill. They needed it. We took Piercing Shot away. But let's give them an ability that combos with Mana Force so that I can blind the target with Arrow of Light. And then I can Mana Force them and I can weaken them. Okay. And then Missile Rain. Missile Rain took a hit on its damage. Uh, rightfully so. That ability was fucking nuts. To look at their passives... Uh, Eagle Eyes now gives 9% critical damage, because let's just give them more damage. 
Uh, at the exchange of it lost 5% crit rate and 5% accuracy. Uh, Feral Claws now gives uh, 50, uh, uh, 50, uh, point, uh, 55 attack speed and a cooldown on the skills. It, you know, it changed because it currently gives a flat rate of 15% damage. But don't worry because you're going to get that range damage back on your abyssal, or your abyssal passive. We'll get there. Uh, evasion. Evasion is a big kind of change. You're losing 10% flat evasion, but you're gaining 12% agility. So you're going to get like a 1% of that evasion back, but you're going to get 12% agility. Whatever. Uh, Sharpshooting. If your target is 25 meters or more away, you get to add 30% damage. Now, what the fuck, XL? You take away their debuff when they're inside 8 meters of you, so an archer can basically get up in your chili and shred you to the face. And then, if they're kiting you from far away, they get 30% more damage. Pick one. Pick just one. Slow balance. I once saw somebody say that XL games couldn't balance this game if they were trying to balance two twins on a tw uh, teeter-totter. And oh my god, let's just give archery everything. Your two uh, uh, passives that are locked behind your abyssal skills, archery expertise, it used to give you 10% on all your cooldowns. Now it reduces your shackle by 30%. So at least archers aren't going to be shooting you in the face constantly. And marksman, it gives range skill damage plus 10%, used to get plus 15%. Uh, on archery abilities, so marksman is probably going to carry over to the two arrows out of shadow play. Now, battle rage. Big thing you got to realize is shaken was changed. Those are the shaken changes. I think this is the dumbest change I've seen. Uh, it attacks your resilience directly. The whole point of resilience was to build an immunity to critical damage and critical rate. So let's just give Battle Rage, as I said in the part one video, their crit rate is going to be based off strength. Their damage is going to be based off strength. So let's have them focus on only one stat and take away the target's like anti-critical uh, stat. And minus 20% off your resilience, that's a huge damn number, just just so we're clear. That's losing a thousand resilience if you have five thousand. So just put keep that in mind. The only good thing is that there was a significant nerf to damage in Battle Rage, five percent off the weapon maneuver and five percent right off the top on the uh, Battle Rage skills. So that's good all around. As you can see, I'm not going to read all of these to you. Uh, the big one, Battle Focus, you're going to lose. 10% uh, on your parry. Uh, that's kind of a big deal. Whirlwind Slash. Uh, you're actually getting a, a buff on Whirlwind Slash. Uh, Frenzy. Frenzy is no longer going to absorb 21% magic. So that is going to hurt a little bit for plate wearers who used Frenzy to starve off uh, magic attacks. But you are going to get plus 80 melee attack versus plus 30. So... Uh, that's a good one. Also, Frenzy no longer affects magic attack, so none of these battle mage crazy builds. Uh, Precision Strike stays mostly the same. Tiger Strike takes a nerf. Behind Enemy Lines takes a big nerf in these damage uh, percentages. Their skill changes, uh, or their passives. Weapon Mastery is now the crit skill, because the Battle Rage damage skill is locked behind the Abyssal. But you do pick up 1% crit damage. I'm sorry, you pick up 1%, but instead of it being crit rate, it's crit damage. Uh, so that's a big one. Uh, weapon maneuvers, it increases strength by 12%. So this is a huge nerf because it doesn't buff your melee attack flat by 5% anymore. So that's another huge nerf. Uh, I'm going to let you look at the speed training one because that's a, a, a change. You're going to lose that 10% melee skill damage. So you're you're losing skill damage in Battle Rage everywhere. Uh, Reckless Charge, you get 40% instead of 35 on the debuffs. 
And like I said, the dual wield proficiency, you now get 10% melee skill damage. And this should affect the melee skills in shadow play as well. Because they're no longer restricted to battle rage skills. Uh, it So it should cross over. Now, really big one that should have hurt everybody in the caster realm. Hummingbird Diddy uh, no longer gives 10% cast time. Well, 9% or the 10% with the instrument. But... Sorcery, you somehow managed to starve this off because you get extra cast time passives. So, fuck you, mages. Um, one huge thing is sorcery, you lost that 5 meter range passive. And you didn't get 5 meters for free on your skills. Uh, you lose some significant damage percentages. So, you might have to change the way you play and think a little bit. So as you can see, Fireball takes a little bit of a hit. Freezing Arrow takes a significant hit. Arc Lightning, Chain Lightning, Meteor, they all take hits to their, their percentage on their attack. Uh, on their passives, Recuperation gives you Magic Crit Damage 9%. Currently it takes away Sleep and Fear. So again, let's just make Mages more fucking powerful because that's what they needed. Get a little bit more Mana Pool. The efficient sorcery, um, let's give let's give mages 12% intelligence because they need more damage, right? Uh, mana flurry, it you get attack speed, cast time, and physical defense decreased uh, when you use insulating lens, frigid tracks, or magic circle. Uh, I'm just going to leave this at, it's way different than it is now. Uh, mages, you need to do your homework on how this one changed. And... Aaron Zeb's Infusion uh, now gives you 8% cast time. It's currently 15% sorcery damage. Um, but don't worry, you get your damage back in Magic Precision. Now, all I have to say is you as a mage manage to keep 24% cast time. You're not going to be hurting as much in cast time. What is going to hurt you a little bit is you're not going to have that flat magic crit rate 10%. So realize all you mages that use this massive crit build, you're losing percentages on your skills and you're losing 10% crit rate. You're going to have to compensate for that. Uh, at least magic range boost. I assume North America is going to change the name because magic range boost and reducing silence by 30% doesn't make a lot of sense. And to close up, we're going to talk about Vitalism, and I have my little friend here, and he's got something to say about all these changes. What the shit biscuit? That's right. Deadpool and I say, what the shit biscuit? First of all, Vitalism. You are nerfed to all hell. You don't have a way to make up for the cast time, which is goddamn stupid in my opinion. Uh... It's hard enough to get your cast time down to the fact that so that you can overheal damage. Uh, so cast time is going to be a major problem for healers now. A couple of positive changes. Renewal gets a huge buff and it provides a bonus heal. That's cool. There's a prayer change that allows us to get at least 15% of that cast time back if we stack prayer. And Joyful Spirit gives us 10% healing. Uh, so that's really big as I've talked about many times what the healing skill does. Uh, we can never seem to get enough of it. Horrible changes. We lose our cooldown passive. What the hell? We no longer have synergy with Songcraft. Uh, I'll talk about this again in Songcraft, but Odor Recovery doesn't boost our healing power. Uh, we can't song weave anymore because uh, discipline performance on the rhythm stacks no longer increases healing power and we no longer have oromancy synergy we can't build stacks of inspire to reduce our cooldowns so we got hammered all over the place on cast times and cooldowns and and holy bolt our bread and butter spell got a 0.5 second increase i don't know i guess people were salty about healers kicking their ass um so I did a couple of examples for healers because, you know, you're now the redheaded stepchildren in, in the classroom. So I did this solid for you. 
We probably won't fall off as much if we're over a thousand healing power because of that 10% healing. So that's a good thing. Uh, it's going to be the same on all the heals. I didn't do it across the board. Uh, Resurgence took a hit, but Resurgence gains a buff if you're under Renewal. I don't know. I guess this is a way to force you to take Renewal. Uh, down here, they made Renewal have a heal on its own, and it has gradual recovery. So that's like the only good thing. Mend took a huge goddamn nerf. I don't... Fuck's sake is wrong with you on Mend. Uh, Antithesis uh, took a huge, a huge hit on its heals. It went from 461 to 440%. To 537 and 300%. The only light at the end of the tunnel is it's going to gain 30% on targets under renewal. But it currently has a bonus on targets under resurgence. So yeah, healers welcome to getting screwed over. Uh, it's damage went up 20%. Uh, I don't know why you would hurt a healer and then give them more damage. Counterintuitive. Fervent healing absolutely screwed losing 60 percent of the healing power uh, percentage uh at least infuse goes back to granting the shield of eighteen thousand. we get rhythmic renewal as not the healing pad that we're used to it's an aura and it restores uh three thousand almost thirty two hundred plus sixteen hundred percent of your healing power but since it's random, as we all know, Mend will land on a person that's missing 10 hit points and ignore the guy that's like nearly dead. I imagine that this will do the same thing. All right, and to talk about the vitalism passives, and this is just, we get completely fucked here. Invigorate healing, sure, let's give a lot of other classes bonuses and let's take 5% of our crit heal bonus away. It's because reasons. Now, spirit growth, I'm going to talk about first. Uh, we used to get 9% spirit. It's been one of our uh, passives for a long time. So thanks, we get 3% more to give us 12 across the board. Everybody got 12% strength, agility, int, or we get 12% spirit. Uh, this is a huge nerf for us. We've always had 9% of our stat above our peers. This should be 21 because if everybody else is going to get 12, and we've always had 9, we should get 9 plus 12 for 21. So this is another nerf. I know it doesn't seem like a nerf, it's a nerf. Now, Alms, Defiance, and what they do. The old Alms was a flat rate 6% cast time reduction. That's gone. Alms now is what Defiance was with all the craziness. I know, a little hard to understand. So I'm going to say that Defiance is a passive, but it no longer gives 500 magic defense to the raid. Alms no longer does not give 500 magic defense to the raid. All Defiance does is affect post-cast mana regen, which, why the hell do we need it? Because A, you increase the rank 7 pots, and B, you reduced all the mana costs. So I don't understand. Uh, whatever. Now, Alms is the same as it is with Prayer, current day, stacks up to 5. Uh, each stack reduces cast time by 6%. So if you're stacking, you can get your cast time down. Uh, the good news is it still does that mojo with Mend and throws out Renewal to everybody. Even better is Infuse no longer eats this, which means... Infuse is going to be in basically everybody's build because they're going to be using it for the shield. Now, that might make sense why you want a lot of post-cast mana regen because as you're going to see when we talk about Meditate, <laughs> that got fucked too. Uh, what's locked behind your Abyssal? Now, this is what really just hurts a healer. Because they put Joyful Spirit behind our Abyssal, we don't have a choice. This is like, we must take this. All of the four main trees are basically like, oh, I got to take my Abyssal. But as you're going to see, we lose a lot of uh, synergy with Oromancy. We can't take the cycling damage tree anymore. 
or a passive anymore. So we'll see that. Painful recharge, reduce silence by 40% and convert. Uh, it used to convert 3% of damage to mana. I personally would like to see painful recharge stay the same. And I would like to see the new Defiance not have anything to do with post-cast mana regen and give us maybe 5% damage to mana. <laughs> Never going to happen. XL doesn't give a shit what this guy thinks. And that's it, guys. That's the major changes to your four main trees. Now, the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, three of the support trees at a time. And then once this four-part series is over, I'm going to do a real good breakdown for the healers at the very least and show you uh, what you need to start thinking about now. Anyway, be looking for part three of this video series. That's going to talk about uh, Oromancy, defense, and occultism. Uh, hey, you. Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Hit that subscribe button. Watch a couple of more videos. Go check out our website.